Yeah, so welcome student for today's lecture. Um, so, so far we discussed about uh, last class uh, class equations, okay? And um, so you can ask, uh, um, you can ask uh, why, why this kind of name class equation, right? How this class came. So, so I'd like to um, um, just recall what was that class equation and then I will start little bit more about this so uh, so in the class equation what we say we, we start with g's which is acting on itself via conjugation conjugation okay and uh, under these actions you can write down the number of elements of g as or of the center of the group g plus uh, sum of our uh, this distinct representative uh, of uh, uh, this uh, centralizer so index of centralizer of uh, say cg okay and g, g is what so g is those element of the group which does not belong to the center and uh, uh, G is actually C. You recall that these uh, C G is actually are centralizers which are uh, stabilizer in general, right? So uh, then, uh, so they forms uh, partition on the group G, right? So you take those. Uh, uh, so this is kind of you should say star. So this is. Uh, Full coastal representative, right? A distinct, distinct uh, representative. Representative of these cosets, uh, cosets of uh, this centralizer, right? Yeah. So, uh, so uh, this was you already given a proof. Now question is that why this is called class equation? What do you mean by class? So, so I should say one more thing here. So, um, uh, so definition. So, um, the orbits, orbits under uh, the Conjugation actions, conjugation actions is or are or which are called conjugacy classes. Conjugacy classes, classes of uh, that group G, right? And uh, recall that we already proved that uh, the orbit given element in the index, so then number of elements inside the orbit is exactly equal to the index of uh, the stabilizer of that element uh, uh, inside, uh, inside the group G, right? Uh, now, if we translate it, then so, so let me write down these conjugate classes by this symbol. So. So I write down that CL of G, conjugate classes of G. So so um, this orbit becomes conjugate class. So that is nothing but uh, index of uh, that centralizer of G inside X. Okay. So now you understood that uh, is, this is actually uh, this sum. Actually, you can you can transfer this sum as uh, this order of G is nothing but uh, center of this plus summation uh, plus conjugation. So, uh, so this this does not belong to center, and uh, this is uh, this G runs over distinct. Conjugacy classes.
okay so you understand why it is called the class equation right okay so now uh, now let me uh, let me uh, uh, remind you one more question which i ask uh, maybe couple of lectures before that last two question one was that uh, how many elements are there in each constituent class uh, each orbit and that was the answer okay and uh, one more question i asked that how many orbits are there right so similarly you can ask here uh, because under conjugacy class uh, conjugacy actions so orbit become conjugacy classes so you can ask how many conjugacy classes are there right so let me ask the same question how many uh, orbits orbits are there for any in general i am asking okay any group actions okay okay and this leads to the uh, theorem uh, that is uh, the, uh, this is called nowadays barnside lemma barnside barnside's lemma okay do do barnside uh, uh, prove this thing barnside mentioned that this was uh, question due to provenius but actually uh, before provenius cosi knew this question cosi asked this question actually this much before but yeah but people call it barnside lemma so barnside lemma counts the number of elements uh, number of conjugate classes or other number of orbits right and then uh, so so we will count the number of orbits in uh, under in group action okay so le, le, before giving you that uh, the formula so let me uh, let me let me just uh, start with some calculation so if uh, so or maybe let me just give you the statement first so let g be a final group if i might group acting on a finite set x then the number of number of orbits Uh, under this axis is this this is the number of orbits so what is that this is 1 by finality of g plus you you collect those g n variant uh, uh, cardinality of g n variant set fixed of g and then g belongs to g okay and this is the number of uh, actually orbits under uh, any group actions okay how do we prove this kind of statement so uh, this common real group so let me give you a simple proof um, proof so uh, so let me just consider uh, the set s so s is what s is collection of all uh, one of pair such that g belongs to g and x belongs to s and the image in the that uh, the g dot x equal to x okay so so uh, x is invariant under and the action of g so this is my set x and i would like to count the number of elements inside x so s so so this is a question so what is the cardinality of s okay the simple question okay now uh, obviously you can count this number of elements in two ways and then we will um, equate this number and then we will finally get uh, this number of conjugacy uh, orbits okay number of orbits so so how do how do ca uh, ca calculate these things see see this is order pair right so either you can fix the element of x and count how many g's are there such that g dot x is the 
or you can fix uh, a g and count how many x are there such that g does x equal to x right now let me let me do the first the easiest part so uh, for a for a fixed g belongs to g uh, you, what you can write you can write that uh, so if you fix a g belongs to g then what happened then uh, then uh, your uh, uh, if you fix g belongs to g then um, then it is the it is the collection of all those x such that g does x equal to x right so what does that mean that means this is the g and variant subset of x right or rather fix it so then for a fix g you can write down that uh, uh, this um, is becomes for a fix g okay becomes nothing but this set this g invariant uh, subset of x okay they become this right for a fixed so what does that mean that means uh, this is actually this disjoint union of this disjoint union of g belongs to g this itself right clear this is part is clear so you are counting you fix a g and you counting how many x are there such that yeah uh, this set is what so what are the elements of x as the g of x to x uh, that's nothing but the g invariant subset of x which is fixed defined by fix of g right so so this is kind of um, okay so uh, yes yeah, so, and also you can find out that if uh, like this is the disjoint so uh, obviously I am not. I am taking uh, identities out. So, so is. Uh, so, actually, I should not say disjoint because uh, I, I am running. I am counting all such order pair, right? So, yeah, I should not say disjoint. This is a union of. This. Okay. Yeah. So, so then cardinality will be what? Cardinality will be uh, the sum of our g belongs to g. The cardinality of. Uh, this fixed up right okay so this is this is one way of calculating uh, the cumulative of s and there is a different way of calculating also this so and uh, on the other end on the other end uh, for a fixed x what happens so if you fix an x then you are asking how many g's are there such that g does x equal to x so what does that mean that means how many uh, for uh, how many g fixes x so that is nothing but the stabilizer of x right so you are asking that um, how many uh, so then s becomes nothing but stabilizer of x in g right Clear. So, so again, you can write down that uh, this summation over x belongs to x such that um, this order of the stabilizer, right? Right. So now again, you know that um, uh, that uh, this actions actually partitions this x in terms of uh, the digital union of uh, say. The orbits say maybe let me write down say i equal to 1 to t. So suppose there are t many orbits are there, which we am I'm interested to find out. So you can write down x equal to some g x1, g x2 union, and then g x t, and this is the full x, right? That is, um, and that is because these g x i's are the partitions, uh, they are equivalent classes, so they form partitions of x, right? So, uh, so what does that mean? That means um this you can obviously count uh, so 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 this is we know already so okay so this is, i should say t some over t this we already know 
through the help of the what I can write so I can write down these sums as uh, first so let me let me just separate uh, those exercise r1 to t and then each of exercise r element of uh, I say I other I should say I equal to 1 to t yeah. I equal to 1 to t and exercise are element of G exercise and then the order of the stabilizer of G exercise right clear so so uh, so instead of taking some or all those exercise so what I did I, I I make the sum kind of double sum I have divided into orbits and for each element of orbits I know that in each element this number of stabilizers element of stabilizer is same that we already prove it so in that case I can write down that one two t okay so maybe I should right, go to the new page. So then, what happened then? Um, for for I equal to one to t, and then sum over this x i elements of the orbits g x i, and then you know that the element in the stabilizer is nothing but. Uh, this right that is that is known because we know that um, uh, this uh, number of elements in the uh, orbit is nothing but the index of g right as g x is the index of civilization inside g right this is already known so what does that mean that means this equation you can write down c now for each x i belongs to the orbit uh, this this number of elements in the orbit is fixed right because uh, this, this is an invariant for each element right and hence this is kind of gx so the whole thing invariance that comes out so you'll have some sign i equal to 1 to t and mod g some mod x and then you count how many such elements inside their GXI. So that is uh, GXI itself, right? So that get cancelled and hence you have sum over mod G and I equal to 1 to T, right? But again, this this is invariant of T. So this sum is nothing but T times uh, mod of G, current of G, right? So what do we have? So uh, on the other hand, you have the number of in the S is nothing but T times order of the group. And what is T? T is nothing but the uh, T is here. So the T is the number of uh, distinct orbits. Okay, so, so so what is the conclusion? Conclusion is that on the one hand you have t times mod g, and the other hand you have summation g belongs to g, and this g invariant connected of g invariant side, and hence your t is nothing but 1 by mod g times summation fixed set of g. This right okay so this is the answer so so number of orbits under any group actions is defined by this quantity this quantity okay and the simple corollary so uh, when you have these conjugation actions then uh, uh, so the immediate corollary so if G is acting on itself via conjugation then 
this number of uh, country classes, then the number of conjugacy classes uh, in in G is what is nothing but one by order of G so uh, so, so so what is this fixed set of G okay so I should say also how this fixed set of G look like here okay so let me write down here so what is what so for conjugacy action what is the fixed energy fixed energy is nothing but all those um, all those x belongs to g so here i should write down okay so all those x belongs to g is nothing but my x right such that uh, g fixes x so x is invariant under G, right and and what is this operation this operation is nothing but conjugation so all this equals to g such that uh, g x g inverse equal to x right but what does that mean that means all those equals to g such that g x equal to x g so what does that mean you collect all the elements which comes with G and this is nothing but centralizer centralizer of G right so for conjugacy actions you fix uh, uh, this uh, G invariant subset a uh, fixed set of G is nothing but the central centralizer of this is the centralizer centralizer of G okay and hence you can write down here the uh, cardinality of the centralizer of G. Okay, and G belongs to uh, G. Clear. So, so, uh, so you can count the number of conjugate classes, and that that was one of my earlier questions. So I just answered this thing. Okay. Yeah. So now. Um, Another question I should ask. Uh, so yeah. So before going to that, so let me just uh, write down some definition. Suppose G is acting on X, okay? Uh, then um, or rather, uh, I should define I should define. Oh, so G is a group acting on a set X. So Actions and actions is called uh, is called a transitive actions transitive actions. If what happens if uh, if there is only one orbit, only one orbit. Okay. So what does that mean mathematically? So that is uh, that is for any two elements so any uh, x and y belongs to x there exists g belongs to g such that such that what happens such that uh, your, your your x can be written as or y can be written as g dot x okay so uh, so what does that mean that means that you can always um, uh, you can always uh, uh, find out an element such that element of G such that um, you can go from one element to another element by the action of the element of the group G okay so then in that case so what does that mean that means 
all the elements are uh, 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 related under the group actions which defined from the uh, uh, group related under the relation which is induced from the group action G and hence what happened hence you have only one orbit right okay so this is called transitive actions and then you have one more thing uh, faithful so action and actions action is called a faithful action faithful action it's kind of uh, similar to one one property you can say that uh, if uh, if um, uh, for any um, g1 and g2 belongs to g and say x belongs to x uh, g1 dot x equal to g2 dot x then g1 g2 has to be equal so g1 equal to g2 okay. this is kind of similar to that injective property right so the faithful action means that whenever you have a two different element of the group then there must exist an element belongs to x such that um, uh, such that uh, that uh, image under the uh, uh, image under the actions of these two elements are different okay so this is a meaning so other so um, so this is equivalent to saying that if g1 not equal to g2 there exists x belongs to x such that g1 dot x not equal to g2 dot x both are same right this is called faithful actions okay Okay, so these, these are uh, some definitions. So with the definition, uh, we would like to uh, uh, just do some general theory and then we will try to conclude some very much important theorem. Okay, so now, uh, so again, the, let me start the setup. So we have a group G acting on a set X. So whenever I am writing this thing, I mean the left action, okay. So, so what does that mean? That means uh, that means there is a map from G cross X to X, right? Now, um, every such map, so every such map induce induces um, uh, a permutation permutation on x okay uh, by how how they in this permutation by uh, so by the map so you can write down that say sigma of g from x to x with this sigma g of x is nothing but g dot x so this is this is my map okay so given a group actions g cross x to x you can define a map from x cross x to x map from x to x by uh, sigma g of x g and then um, yeah so this is for a fixed thing for a fixed g belongs to g okay so you define this thing so now note that this the sigma g is a uh, so claim sigma g is a permutation permutation on x what does that mean? That means I need to prove that sigma g uh, is a, a bijective map, right? So, so, uh, so, so you can you can prove either uh, that you have a inverse, or you can prove one one and one two. I mean, uh, it is easy to prove that the inverse exists. Okay, and uh, uh, that is obvious almost, right? So, so, so what is the case? So, given a 
sigma g given uh, so for any g belongs to g uh, you have this g inverse belongs to g right the inverse is the element and then you, you talk about a sigma g inverse and you check that sigma g inverse actually is nothing but the inverse of sigma g so how, how to write down sigma g inverse so how to check this inverse so the composition must be identity right now if we apply on an element on uh, the set x then what happens then it will be uh, g inverse of g compose of x right now by definition of uh, the sigma g you can write down that sigma g inverse of g dot x right this is by definition of uh, my sigma g and hence you can write it down as again by definition uh, g inverse dot g dot x right now we know that uh, this is a group action so that that associative kind of property of group, the second property of group action tells you that this is nothing but g inverse g dot x which is nothing but and dot x which is nothing but x right so what does that mean that means the sigma g inverse composed sigma g is, is kind of active this, this is for for all x belongs to x right for every element of x it is sending the same point so it's kind of identity right and you can you can obviously you can also prove uh, uh, similarly you can prove similarly you can prove that sigma g compose sigma g inverse of x is also x uh, for all x belongs to x so thus uh, sigma g inverse is nothing but the sigma g whole inverse right inverse of that okay and so sigma g is a permutation permutation on x right so whenever you have a uh, group actions you can always define a permutations um, uh, on x right so but on the other, other hand we, we know that this um, uh, this uh, sx is what this is, is that uh, group of permutation right so group of group of permutations um, under composition composition of functions composition right and you have a group g right so so, so we have two groups one is group g one is the, that permutation group on the set x right now you would like to know that is there any kind of relation between these two groups and the answer is yes so you can define a map phi such that phi you send the element of take the element of g and send it to sigma of g okay so i am defining a map that uh, it sends every element of g to the permutation right so sigma g is a permutation so what is sigma g sigma g is a permutation on x so which maps every element of x to the image under the group actions clear yeah. so what does that mean that means every group actions induce such maps now my claim is that uh, claim that this phi is not a uh, ordinary map, phi is a very nice map. So phi is a homomorphism of groups. Homomorphism of groups. Okay. So phi is a homomorphism from G to S of X. Okay, so how to prove this thing? So again, uh, yeah, proof is not difficult. So, but let me give you a proof. So to prove something homomorphism, what do you need? So you need to say that let you choose two arbitrary labels, say let G1, G2 belong to G, and then you would like to know what is phi of G1, G2, right? 
Now you know that phi of g1, g2 is an element. The way I define phi of g1, g2 is an element of that uh, power some groups. So that they, they are already mapped. So phi g1, g2 is mapped, right? This is sigma of g1, g2, which is the element of this Sx, right? Now to check some maps are equal, this map equal to phi g1 composed phi g2 or not, what I need to check, I need to check that what happened uh, under the action of any element, right? So let us do that. So now, uh, now phi of g1 and g2 of x will be nothing but this sigma g1 g2 of x which will be nothing but g1 g2 dot x right by definition of group actions uh, definition of sigma using the group actions but again the property group action tells you that this is g1 dot g2 dot x right but what is g2 dot x so g2 dot x is nothing but g2 dot x is nothing but um, yeah so how do I write? So let me write down by this. So this is dot, right? So this is sigma g1 compose sigma of g2 of x, right? So sigma g1 compose sigma g2. Uh, yeah, so whatever of x, right? So so this phi g1 g2 acting on um acting on or other oh, i should not say compose here so this is phi of this okay. this is not this is uh, okay this is composition obviously so how do i write down this it's composition so let me write down this by phi of g1 compose phi of g2 and then x right and this is true for all x belongs to x. So what does that mean? That means that uh, phi of g1, g2 is nothing but phi of g1. See here it is product, but here it is composition. Composition phi of inside the foundation group, this is composition, right? So it, it, it satisfies the um, it satisfy that uh, homomorphism property. Thus, phi is a homomorphism, right? This is clear so far. So, what does that mean? That means if uh, uh, G is acting on a set X, then there exists a homomorphism. Homomorphism, morphism induced by this action, induced by uh, these uh, group actions, okay, uh, from G to this population groups on it, right? And these actions, so this this is called uh, this homomorphism has a very really nice name. This is called population representation of uh, the group G. So this homomorphism is called homomorphism is called the permutation representation uh, representation of G okay clear so uh, this is called permutation representation of G, right? So, uh, mm, mm, 
yeah so now uh, uh, let me just uh, finally so th this part is okay now let me define uh, uh, rather discuss this very much important proof that is called uh, Kelly's theorem so what is Kelly's theorem so Kelly's theorem tells you that um, Kelly's theorem is very important theorem and that tells you that whenever you have a, a group uh, G acting on a set X, and then you can do these these things. And uh, okay, so yeah, so I, I so let me just define Kelly's theorem without saying the reduction. Then I will come back to this. So what is Kelly's theorem tells you that so whenever you have finite group G, then uh, it is always isomorphic to a subgroup of Poundation group, right? So Poundation groups uh, of uh, so now question is that. Uh, uh, what type of partition group? Like how big is that? So if the group G is having order n, then uh, so uh, then you have partition groups uh, of order n uh, on n symbol, right? So how do I write? So mathematically, okay. So let me write down this mathematical uh, version. So. least okay let g be a finite group of order n then G is asymorphic perfect to a subgroup of SN. Okay. So you need to till go till SN. You cannot find out sometimes you cannot find out in SN minus one. Okay, there are counter example. You find out some group of order in such that there is no isomorphism copy of that group inside this and minus one, right? That you can find out. Now, how, how do how do you prove this kind of theorem? So, um, so, um, so proof. So now, uh, now I can write down uh, my G is acting on G. Via left multiplication, left multiplication, multiplication. What is that? Uh, so that is here map from G cross G to G by. Uh, so so G dot G dash equal to G G dash. G and G dash belongs with this. Just multiply from left side. Okay. Now this is also group action. So that that was an example which we discussed uh, before. Okay. So under with this group action also you can have same thing, right? So this also induces that uh, homomorphisms and thus. This uh, group action induce, induces a homomorphism, homomorphism uh, from. Uh, so 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 see uh, so G to um, SG here X equal to G right but what is SG SG is nothing but SN so SG means as power group on uh, n many elements right because G has n many uh, n many elements right so you can you can say that uh, this uh, representation from G to SN where 
prime derivative of g equal to n okay so 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 is g is nothing but uh, rather it's about to be same okay and what is that map so you take um, any g belongs to g and send it to sigma g and how the sigma g look like so where sigma g acting on any x by let multiplication so g into g x so this is the group operation the dot is nothing but the multiplication okay okay g dot x uh, g into x right now uh, now uh, it is now it is simple to prove that this is actually uh, there is only one orbit under this axis and also this is faithful so faithful implies this is actually uh, so so you already get it right so this is there is this is uh, homomorphism right so this phi is a homomorphism now i need to prove that the cardinal is actually a single term and then i can talk about uh, so thus so let me write down thus uh, using the first isomorphism theorem what does this tell? it tells you that g mod kernel of phi is isomorphic to the image image of phi right which is a subgroup of the population group now if i prove the kernel is identity then i'm done then g is isomorphic to phi of g right now how to prove kernel is identity singleton now you remember kernel is singleton if only phi is one on map now we need to prove that phi is one one and that is also true that phi is one on means one right so how, how to prove phi is one one so 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 kernel is trivial and to prove right if only uh, this phi is injective right now how to prove injectivity so uh, so let phi of some g1 equal to phi of g2 for some g1 g2 belongs to g and what does that mean that means uh, sigma g1 equal to sigma g2 as a map they are same so what does that mean that means uh, sigma g1 of g equal to sigma g2 of g for all g belongs to g okay for all and this means g1 g right but then g has inverse so uh, you just uh, so right cancellation property tells you that g1 equal to g2 and this implies phi is 1 1 what i want to prove done so so phi is injective map so kernel is trivial and hence uh, your g is isomorphic to phi of g which is nothing but a subgroup of SN right so thus uh, we just proved the Kelly's theorem which tells you that every finite group of order n is isomorphic to a subgroup of SN okay so this complete completes the proof of the Kelly's theorem okay okay so maybe I will stop here because today we will also learn very much important theorems uh, said lemma we learn and also we learn Kelly's theorem okay so let us stop here bye